Let's move on. Bill English is adamant his ministers were not responsible for leaking information about the New Zealand First Leader Winston Peters' superannuation overpayment. A furious Mr Peters has accused National Party ministers of character assassination and underhanded behaviour after finding out a handful of senior National Party figures were briefed about his situation. Three government investigations have now been launched into the leak. Here's our political editor, Jane Patterson. Two government ministers and the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff Wayne Eagleson were briefed by government officials about Mr Peter's pension overpayment, which he's now repaid. However, Bill English says he's personally been assured by them they were not the source of the leak. The Social Development Ministry and IRD have launched internal investigations. Mr English says Ministerial Services is also looking into it. At how uh, information was handled in ministerial offices, I mean, we would take... Uh, uh, you know, a production of private information into the public arena very seriously. And that's why there's an uh, investigation by State Services Commission and MSD, who I understand are following their normal policy. Winston Peters says that changes nothing. Well, they can all cover their bum as hard as they can like, but frankly, it's rotten, it's bad, and we're not going to have an in-house inquiry sorting out what should never have happened in the first place by looking into their own... Uh, misrepresentations or misactions. The State Services Commissioner Peter Hugh says the no surprises policy allows ministers to be made aware of significant issues but they must not become involved in operational matters. The Social Development Minister Anne Tolley and State Services Minister Paula Bennett were the two ministers briefed under that policy. Mr Peters says there's no reason the commissioners or the ministers should have had the information. It's clear now that there were people who knew things that I didn't even know about my case. So this is not right. An innocent mistake was made and they've done their best to character assassinate me and I think that's disgusting. Mr English acknowledges it would have been better if ministers weren't briefed about it. But he says regardless, both ministers acted with integrity. Our ministers were put in the position where they were given information about the set of circumstances around Mr Peters. They didn't ask for it, they weren't looking for it. They were given some information and they handled it appropriately because, uh, by not telling anyone, including me, because it was personal to an individual who was collecting superannuation. The Labour leader Jacinda Ardern says the no surprises policy should be reviewed. I think we probably need some quite clear criteria around when that is used. Uh, but you would hope that even then, even if they thought that that was justified, um, that that has to be kept highly confidential. I mean, government departments hold a lot of information about, well, all New Zealanders, including members of parliament, and you'd hope that that would be treated with um, discretion. Meanwhile, Mr Peters was asked to explain how he ended up owing money after receiving the single person's pension rate. I wish I could. I spent a long conversation with MSD on that very question and we couldn't come to a conclusion on it. But, you know, it happens thousands and thousands and thousands of times. Now, I'm not going to be standing by whilst reporters try and malign me on the fact that I didn't need the money or I was so careless or I should have known. He says even MSD couldn't figure out how it happened. When they said to me, it appears you've been overpaid, we want to discuss that with you, I went and had a discussion, we tried to work out how that was possible, couldn't get it resolved, and then my only concern was, well, please tell me, I don't, want, I don't know what its componentry is, just please tell me what the figure is so I can get rid of it. Mr Peters says he's taking legal advice before deciding what further action to take in response to the leak. For Checkpoint, Jane Patterson.